Okay, so I have here a empty Amberg tunnel project. It just has the structure defined. So here we have a under the construction node, we have a site, which I just made up the name, I called it South. And inside this site, I have a heading called Southline. And that's as far as I've, uh, I have created. So if I just quickly go here to this animation, just to review the project structure. So inside the Amberg tunnel project, we have, um, we can have one or more sites. Each site can be made up of one or more tube or shaft headings. Each tube or shaft heading is defined by a single axis. That's very important. It can only be one axis. But then we have this concept of the construction stage. This is where we can create different designs around the axis. So for example, in the excavation construction stage or, or the first construction stage, um, we might have the theoretical profile of the excavation. Uh, we also might have the design, the tasks that we want to carry out in this construction stage in, in Navigator. So for example, in, in excavation, we might want to do automatic profile measurement. We might want to do blast pattern and so on. Maybe some, some machine guidance. And then likewise, the measurements are also organized at the construction stage level as well. So this data that comes back into Amberg Tunnel from Amberg Navigator from the tunnel. Then control points are also organized at the tube or, or shaft level. But strictly speaking, they, they can all, all control points can be stored in any of the tubes and they will be used across the project. So it's not strictly speaking necessary for control points to be divided carefully amongst the different tubes and shafts. And then lastly, once we have the data in the various construction stages, we can perform analysis and various profile analysis, point cloud or geotechnical. OK, I will jump back here to the project. So the first thing we're going to do here is to uh, import an axis. So I'll right click here on the axis in the project tree and choose add heading axis. I will call just make up another name. I'll call this south line, for example. And now we can see here a node has appeared under the axis. If I expand it, we have the horizontal alignment editor and the vertical alignment editor. So here in the horizontal alignment editor, we can uh, manually input the data or we can import it from a file. So in the case of manually importing the data, uh, typically this is useful when you receive a, a PDF with the parameters uh, and you don't have the land XML file. But the ideal scenario is to have the file and import it directly. So I'll just quickly show you uh, adding the data manually. So I'll add uh, segment it appears as a line and let's say for example we want uh, the project to start at easting 5000 nording 10000 and the first segment let's say for example we want it to be a straight line segment heading north so the easting is going to be the same and the nording is going to be 10100 uh, i'll hit tab it's disappeared off the screen, so I'll go ahead and zoom to extents. Okay, so we've input the first, our first made up parameter. I can come here now to add, and let's say, for example, this one is a arc. And yes, it's curving to the right, but let's say it's curving um, 600. And then we can add another, and let's say this here will change the input method. We'll maybe change it to start, start azimuth length. We'll change the length to 200 and so on. Maybe I'll add another one, change this to an arc, change it back to, let's say, minus 600 because we want it to curve left. And finally, I'll add another straight section. So it's easy to input the data manually. The most important thing, or one of the most important things here, is to check that there are no warning or error flags. And over here on the right hand side will be the source of the warning or error flags. So a stationing error, an azimuth error, or a positioning error. So for example, if I uh, come here to, um, let's say to this value here, I'm just going to select it, Control c to copy this value. And because what I want to do now is to introduce choose an error so I'll do that 
and now we can see we have errors. If I hover over it, it says that there's a big azimuth difference between the connected elements. If I go over here to the right hand side, we can see that there's a, a position error. Um, so you need to check out uh, for these and sometimes a small error is acceptable. It, maybe this is as, as you received it, uh, but it's important not to ignore these. So what I've done now is just paste back in the value and gets rid of the error. So that's the uh, input manual input method. Here the project is in an unsaved state. So actually I'm going to go ahead and delete these because what I'm going to do is import the data from a file. So I choose this button here and here I have the horizontal alignment in XML, a land XML file. So I'll select it and open and uh, the same alignment has imported. I'll go ahead and, and save and now I'll open the vertical alignment editor. Here the principle is the same, but I'll go ahead and import. You, you can import by right clicking and choosing import or from this button that I used previously. So import. This time I'll choose the vertical alignment editor and open. Okay, so everything is imported fine. There's no warning flags um, and so on. So here we have, uh, we start off at a height of 10, then it, uh, there's an arc transition um, at this connection point, and then it goes up to 20. So what's interesting here is um, that the, the point is not actually on the alignment. This is perfectly normal. This is that because this arc uh, describes how the two elements are connected and they are connected by an arc and it's the tangential connection. So it's the vertical point of intersection connection. So just to be to be aware of this. OK, so we've imported the horizontal and vertical alignment. If you have received the file as a single alignment that contains both horizontal and vertical, you would simply import the file into horizontal alignment here in Amberg Tunnel, import the exact same file into the vertical alignment and save. Also uh, checking for errors, of course. So here the project is again is in an unsaved state, so I will save. So close this, close this. So what's important at this point is to uh, validate the alignment to make sure it's perfectly right because the, the axis is, is the most important aspect of the project. Everything hinges off the axis. The theoretical profiles are positioned based off the axis. The subsequent measurements are described um, relative to the axis. The uh, analysis is based off the uh, axis. So. What we have here, if we right click on the axis, we can use this calculator. And here what's useful is to project points onto the profile. And then we'll export those points and validate them in the ordering tool of your choice or send it back to the designer to validate that yes, the axis in Amber Tunnel is, is perfectly in line with, with, with what the expectations and the specifications. So to do this, you would um, right click here and choose interval point calculator. And uh, I won't go through all of the steps here, but what we can do here is we can, let's say, place a point every every um, 1.5 meters on the, on the axis, uh, on the center of the axis. We can apply it on an offset if we want, but let's go ahead with, with what we have. And it will fill up this table here with values. So we have now for every 1.5 meters, we have a stationing value, subsequent um, slope distances, easting, northing, and so on. So we can select everything, control C, paste this into Excel, directly into Excel. Um, or what's useful here is to export a DXF. Uh, I'll put this on the desktop. I'll call it this. I already have a, uh, a file there, but I'll replace it. And what we can do then is bring that into your ordering tool. So let me just go ahead to the um, to the desktop. I'll open this file that we just created. I need to choose extents here to show it. It's appearing as a line. We can come up here to the layers, turn off the polyline, for example. And we're left with these points every 1.5 meters. So you can take this into your ordering tool and validate it. So this, this is a very, very useful feature. Okay, so um, yeah, like, likewise here, we can go to the point projection calculator and we can import absolute coordinates 
uh, either manually or from a file and uh, convert those into axis coordinates, station and offset. Okay, so we're done with the axis calculator. Uh, the next step is I will jump to the control points, double click on the editor to open it. We don't have any control points here. Uh, so let's go ahead and import control points. Choose this option here. Uh, we want to choose the point ID option and next. And I'll go into the project files and here I have control points. So this is control points, just simple CSV, point ID, easting, norting and elevation with a header, ID, east, north and height. But we have flexibility to, to handle all sorts of configurations in, in Amberg Tunnel. So I'll go ahead and select the file and choose open. And here you can see that the file is not imported correctly. So we can just need to use this editor to correct it. I need to change this here to semicolon in my case. It might be different in your case. So now we have point ID, easting, norting, height. I need to get rid of the header column. So now everything is correct. I'll hit next. Now we need to define what we're importing. This first one is point ID. This here is east. This here is nording. And this is height. Uh, meters, yeah, everything looks good. Import. Um, Field Nording used more than once. Okay, it's I made a mistake here. This here is height and import. And yeah, this is just a time and date. Um, so we can continue here. So now we have this red data where, where it's saying that this point ID is not was not found in the project. Um, this is expected. We know this because we're importing it from a file. So we can overcome this by choosing this option here. Now it's we have warnings just saying that this point ID uh, will be created. This is fine. This is what we want. What's most important here at this point is uh, to check all zero measurements. This basically means that this is a valid point and this will be used. If you don't choose this all zero measurements, it will not be used. So this, this step is often overlooked and can, and, uh, can cause issues. So make sure to have this checked um, and import. So now we have the imported files. Everything looks good. If I select one of them, we see the corresponding coordinates of that file here, making sure that this zero measurement is checked. Uh, if you want to change any coordinates or add new coordinates, you can do so manually by just hitting add control point and adding a measurements. So here we have our control points every 10 meters. Okay, so everything is good now with the control points project is in an unsaved state. I'll go ahead and save it and close the editor. Um, now we need to add our profiles. So I'll expand the design node and right click on construction stage and add a construction stage. So I'll call this uh, excavation. I'm making up all of these names. You can call it whatever you like. And now we have this node. If I expand it, we have the building blocks of the design. So if I open up the theoretical profiles, we can the manual the manual way is to to add a profile here, give it a name, and then add elements here, for example. And we can change the types to straights and define it entering in the data manually for. Uh, uh. But what we will go through in this particular case is I'll delete this information. And what I'll do is, again, I'll delete this, is we'll import it directly from AutoCAD. Now, to do this, we need to prepare the file in AutoCAD. So I'll come over here to this LibreCAD application I'm using and open up um, this uh, file I have here of a profile. I need to zoom out a little, I think. Okay, so what we have here is we have these two profiles. So the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that the profile is on zero, zero, because zero, zero in Amberg Tunnel represents the axis position. And we need to have the profile position relative to the axis. So we will do this. So let's say we're interested only in, um, in this profile here. Uh, so I will delete this one. This is the other important thing to do is to delete all unnecessary information. So I will select this. I will hit control C. It's asking me now to select the reference point. 
I'll choose there. Now I need to select Control V, at least in this application, and select the, uh, where we want to paste it to. So zero comma zero. Okay, so let's see if that has done it. Zoom out. Yep, it's pasted it in zero zero. So now I can delete this. So yeah, it's important to have only the necessary elements. Okay, so the other thing we need to do is Hamburg Tunnel doesn't deal with uh, continuous circles like this. It deals better with um, semicircles. So what we actually have to do in this particular case with this large uh, arc is we need to divide it in half. Uh, it's just a requirement in, in Hamburg Tunnel. So to do this, uh, in again, in this application, I choose Tools, Modify, and I need to divide. It's asking me what I want to divide. I want to divide this. I want to divide it here. And now Escape. And now it is divided. So now I'm done. Just need to remove these remaining unnecessary elements. And we have our profile. There is one step I missed to do, which mean, which is that the profile must be one single polygon. At the moment, I can, can select individual elements. So to do this, select it and tools and polyline, create polyline from existing segments. So now when I select it, it's one continuous polygon. This is what we want. So now I'm done, file, save as. I will call this profile A, A1 and save, and that's it. We can, we can close this. So I'll go back to Amberg Tunnel and right click and choose import. I will select this file we just created, open, and it imports directly. So this, this might be a very useful way to do it if, the, if you've got complex profiles. So project is in an unsaved state. I'll go ahead and save. And uh, what we can do then is, depending on your project, we can always copy a profile and paste it. We can call this profile A2, for example. And this profile A2, maybe we want to, uh, this is actually one meter bigger. So I can come here, right click, and choose to inflate it inflated by one meter so now it's one meter larger and so on you can also shift the profile so if if the, if the profile center is offset from your axis you can you can you can shift it up up or, or to the left or right um, okay so we've created two profiles now uh, so i'll go ahead and save and now we are done here no no errors no problems so we can close this Okay, so next step is to open up the theoretical sections editor. And here we basically um, join up the profiles. So let's say we want to start at zero, zero, at zero, zero from, from zero to let's say 50 stationing, we use profile A1. And then let's say for argument's sake from profile 50 to one, 100, um, we use an interpolation from profile A1 to A2. And that is it. Now we are done. So we can look at this in 3D. And we can see what, what we have created. And we are interpolating um, between, at this point, from the smaller profile to the bigger profile. Okay, so we are, are done here. So I'll go ahead and save and close this. And what we might want to do now is to uh, actually validate that interpolation. Because sometimes when you try to force the software to interpolate between two different shapes that are dramatically different from one another, um, the, the interpolation might not be linear and it might yield um, strange results. So we have a tool to, um, to, to check this. So what we can do is uh, we can right click here and choose export design points. This will actually create a CAD, a, a point cloud of your design. So uh, we need to specify the start stationing 
Um, let's say, okay, we, we, we know that zero, zero is fine. So let's say we start at 25 and we want to go to uh, 100 and we want to point every 0 0.25 um, meters resolution. I'll go ahead and, and export this. I'll put it on the uh, desktop. Um, I'll call it design, design validation. And now it is exporting that point. OK. So we can open this now in, in any Office survey software. So I, here I have Cloud Compare, which is open source. So file, open. Uh, go to the desktop here, design validation points. They just uh, were exported as a text, um, text file. So I'll open this and skip lines. Yeah. Apply. And now we have our design. So you can take this into your CAD package or your BIM package. You can mesh it uh, and interrogate the, the interpolation to make sure it was correct. OK, so finally, before we leave this profile editor, um, we can view it, as I mentioned, in 3D. What's useful here is to go down to the, um, the rendering and maybe we can change the transparency. We can come to the, the axis point here and we can attach the camera to the axis and we can move through the tunnel as well. So just to check. Okay, so I think we are done uh, with everything we wanted to cover. Um, so I will close down the uh, theoretical sections. Um, maybe just before I go, I will come back to the theoretical profiles and um, yes, show you that, that shift um, functionality. So if I come here and copy this profile, and paste it again. We can always copy and paste into different um, construction stages also. So I'll just leave this as, as this. So we can right click here and we can uh, shift the profile. And let's say, for example, we want to shift the profile up 0 0.5 meters or sorry, to horizontal shift. So we can see here now in this bold line that it, it has shifted. Um, so we can go ahead and, and save that. And then we can come back to the theoretical sections. And let's say we want to add a new section from 100 to, to 200. And it changes um, its interpolation. And it changes to, to this one here. Uh, we can look at that then in, in 3D. And we can see the results. So I think now uh, that concludes this, this quick, uh, quick workshop. I hope you found it uh, informative. So thank you. Thank you very much for your time.